So I saw the newest A24 film, It Comes at Night, and I believe this is gonna be a film that's either gonna leave a lot of people happy or really upset. This is the second film coming from director Trey Edward Schultz, who previously directed his debut called Creature that was released in 2015, but thanks to this new film, I believe this is a director you should really keep an eye for. Overall for myself, like, I really, really liked this film. Like, I understood what it was trying to go for, and it was really approaching the horror genre in a very unique way, but this film is not for everybody. I remember my first theater experience, I had a lot of people complain. They're like, what did I just watch? I don't understand any of it which in turn inspired me to make this video. And in this video, I'm gonna break down the film as much as I can. I'm gonna talk about the characters, the symbolism, all the metaphors, and what the it means in the title, It Comes at Night. Now this film leaves open for a lot of interpretation. So from what I have gathered, I'm just gonna cover what I have analyzed from the film. This is not to be taken as fact, but from what I have taken from this film experience and to hopefully have a discussion with you guys. Also, huge spoiler warning for the film, It Comes at Night. So if you haven't seen the film, Go and watch it, form your own opinion, come back here, and we can analyze it together. But other than that, here we go. So the film opens up with a family that we see throughout the film, consisting of the characters Paul, Sarah, and their 17-year-old son Travis, who unfortunately have to put down the grandfather due to this deadly virus. So right there, we know there's a virus, and it's infecting people, but not really turning them into zombies or anything, but instead causing them to be really sick, at least what we first see from the grandfather. And I know there's speculation out there, and people are asking the question, well, is the plague even real? It's, I'm dead serious. That is a serious question that you're going to find on the internet. And just from the opening scene alone, you can know it's very much real and yeah it's infecting people. After Paul kills the grandfather, they light his body on fire to prevent any cause of the disease being spread. And the last reminder of the grandfather is his dog, Stanley, in which Travis takes responsibility of. But shortly after the grandfather's death, Travis begins to have nightmares revolving around the plague and his grandfather, which later becomes a crucial part to the character of Travis and the overall themes of the film. And right there, we see the infamous one way in, one way out hallway, which a painting called The Triumph of Death by Peter Bruegel is shown signifying this is a hell on earth scenario for the characters we have at play. And then immediately following a slow camera pan to the red door that separates the main characters from their claustrophobic home to the outside world. Now first, let's dive into the character of Travis because his character is essentially very important to what the film tries to bring across as we experience on what he goes through. First of which are the nightmares that he has. And from what I've counted, he has a total of five nightmares that he has through the entirety of the film. Also one more thing to add, but it's a very unique and interesting editing choice that the editor decided to go for into altering the aspect ratio from 240 to 275. Now to make that distinction between reality and nightmare, whenever you see the aspect ratio get more narrow, then you know that Travis is in the nightmare sequence. The first nightmare consists of the grandfather slouching at the edge of his bed once Travis goes through the red door. Jump scare happens and so forth, you know what happens from there. The second nightmare takes place the same night that the character named Will breaks into the house and the nightmare has Travis looking at what appeared to be Will in the first zombie-esque look to him while his eyes are completely shrouded in darkness. The third nightmare is of Will's wife named Kim climbing on top of Travis, kissing him and then spitting black goo into his mouth. Now the last two nightmares can be something a little bit tricky because one has to do with the story and the other has to do with the overall theme of the film. So I'm going to have to do my best to try and break these down for you later in the video. But the fourth nightmare takes place after Stanley mysteriously breaks into the house after running into the woods once barking at an unknown entity. That same night, Travis goes through the already open red door, goes out into the woods and witnesses something that terrifies him. Immediately, the film cuts to him being in his bed and sees his grandfather completely consumed by the virus. Now, the fifth and final nightmare is in the last two minutes of the film where Travis is now completely infected by the virus and after his mom telling him the same thing that she told the grandfather, which was to let go, we see Travis walking through the red door and we never see him again. Now these nightmares I believe are very crucial on what's going on through Travis's mind and how he's dealing with living inside the house and how the virus is in a way infecting his psyche. What I have caught about them is how in each of his nightmares the virus gets worse and worse, which I theorize not to taking this as complete fact, 
it's a possibility that Travis has been infected with the virus all along. And you can counter my theory with a line that Paul says to Sarah in which the grandfather only took less than 24 hours to show signs of being infected, but the way I look at it, the virus is a symbol for fear. And the way that fear works, it approaches the human psyche in many different ways and results just like the virus, thus making the process of Travis being infected much longer. I really do believe that in the beginning of the film, the grandfather is in the final process of fear, and due to that, the virus Virus has fully reached to his body. But through Travis's journey within the nightmares, he's slowly becoming more and more infected, in a way, going through the same journey as his grandfather. It's also a clue that he's already infected due to him hanging around Stanley the dog, and you know, Stanley was hanging around the grandfather too much, but you know what, point is, Travis is already infected. Now the first three nightmares are pretty straightforward because the way the first nightmare was edited, we barely get a glimpse of what the grandfather looked like in his infected state since Travis was imagining what it could truly be like in its entirety. He was also imagining if Will could have been infected and also those sexual desires towards Kim because you know, hey, He's a 17 year old kid, his hormones are through the roof. I really don't blame the guy. But this is where the trickiness comes into play about those last two nightmares. Right after the scenes where Travis wakes up in the middle of the night and he sees Andrew sleeping in his grandfather's room, thus resulting into the families deciding to stay away from each other for a couple of days. And it starts off with Travis going into the woods to find Stanley and witnessing something that terrifies him. Now notice how the nightmare takes place right after the death of Stanley. I believe it was the editor's choice to reveal that Travis was the one who opened the red door to actually go out at night to find Stanley. And the thing that he witnesses is possibly the true embodiment of the virus from the two men that Paul and Will killed back in the forest, which looked like to be father and son that Paul decided not to burn. Could have been the reason why Stanley stops barking after Travis chases him out into the woods during the day, which is where the divisiveness comes into play. And I just totally get the complaints from all the people that they're just not really knowing all about what the in-movie virus could be, and it's all really left up into our own interpretation. But I also get why people love it because the way that it's executed, it's for a purpose. And the whole purpose is to bring up the overall theme of the film and that is the fear of the unknown. Trey Edward Schultz reveals that he wants to put us in the position of these characters and having to look from their perspective and not knowing completely where the virus came from or where it is, that is the true embodiment of fear and paranoia. Now the fear part comes from Travis, whereas the paranoia part comes from the character of Paul with all his strict rules about the house and he doesn't even know what's going on outside the woods or even knowing the full potential of the virus. But placing the audience inside the shoes and the minds of these characters and not knowing completely what's out there, that can truly be a terrifying thing. Interesting enough, when the climax happens during Paul and Sarah interrogating the family from having Andrew being infected, that's when the aspect ratio stays at that 275 the rest of the way. It's supposed to symbolize that there is no turning back for Travis. Reality has now become a nightmare for him. Then after Will, Kim, and Andrew get shot and killed, we see Travis laying on his bed and his mother, who looked to be infected by the way, tells Travis to let go. And then the final nightmare sequence occurs of him walking through the red door metaphorically stating that Travis is now dead. The red door symbolizes the bridge between life and death. Although they were living inside the house, they weren't exactly living. But due to the human psyche being consumed by fear and paranoia of the unknown, as expressed through the nightmares of Travis, it will ultimately lead to humanity's downfall. Thus the title, it comes at night. Now that's what I got from my viewings of the film. Now in my first viewing, I picked up on quite a number of things, but not enough to where I can make a video about it. And then for my second viewing, I decided to go out of my way, go to my nearest theater, go watch it again. And after seeing it the second time, I can honestly say that it's easily one of the best films of the year so far. But again, if you hate it, I totally understand. But if for some reason you just so happen to watch it again, I really encourage you to look at this film as if you are in the shoes of Travis. But again, if you don't want to, then that's okay and happens. But now I also want to know what you guys thought about It Comes at Night and what you have dissected from it. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of things that I have missed. So if there's anything that I missed, please feel free to leave it down below. We can have a discussion about it. And this is like the first analysis video that I have done for you guys. But I, I'm just super interested on in what you think of It Comes at Night. And uh, if there's another film that just so happens to be like this film, I want to dissect that one too. But until then, I don't know when that's going to happen. But uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And don't forget to follow me on all social media such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and all that social media shit. I'm going to leave all the links in the description box down below. Keep in contact with me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, may the force be with you. <laughs>